Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Jeff Heath and welcome here. Today we're talking about how to set up your NAS for photo and video editing. Let's get into it. In my last video, I posted about how I set up my QNAP NAS in order to set it up for storage and editing. You can watch the video if you want to and talking about how to put in your hard drives and your SSDs. I bought this QNAP specifically for video editing because it has two bays for two M.2 SSD drives. And I wanted to use that for video editing and then having the HDDs, HHDs, in order to back up all my footage and keep it safe. So in my last video, I set it all up. I did all the hardware stuff and I found out after a little bit of using it that it was not working the way I thought it should be working. So thankfully, I had a contact at QNAP who spent two hours with me the other day setting up my QNAP for video editing. Julian, shout out. Thanks, buddy. You really helped me out. So I want to walk you through the process that Julian walked me through so you can set up your hard drive for video and photo editing so it's quick and fast and safe and redundant and does all the things that a NAS should do. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so what you're going to want to do is we have the QNAP. So in the other video, I showed how to get to this screen. So you should have all your hard drives installed, your SSDs installed, your QNAP plugged in, and your QNAP Finder Pro, uh, your QFinder Pro app ready to go. So this is on its own little server online, has its own unique IP address. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your storage and snapshots. Once you have that open, it says, welcome to storage and snapshots. Uh, we're not gonna do anything here right now. What we want to do is go over to the left here and go to storage and snapshots and we're going to create a new storage pool. So you can click here or here, a new storage pool. The first thing we're going to set up is our SSDs. And what we're going to do with our SSDs is because they are fast and quick, we're gonna use this as our scratch disk. So if you don't know what a scratch disk is, I'm a little vague on it as well. However, my basic understanding is you're using your fastest drive to do the hardest processing things. So you're saving your work files and Final Cut or Premiere, uh, all of your kind of graphic stuff onto the scratch disk, the things that need to be accessed uh, the most and be used the quickest, that will go on your scratch disk. So that's gonna go onto our SSD. So let's set that up first. So here you have your introduction. We're gonna go next. And you see all of our hard drives here that are attached to the NAS. So what we're gonna do is to select our two M.2, two gigabyte or two terabyte SSDs. We're gonna select those. You can have the option here of a RAID 1 or RAID 0. So RAID 0 means that there is no backup. Each drive is being used, they're us being used together. Uh, and RAID 1 uh, essentially duplicates the thing. So initially when I set this up with Julian, we set up as RAID 1. I'm going to set it up as a RAID 0 because I don't need the redundancy on my SSDs because this is where my files for uh, my Final Cut projects are going to be. The actual media, the actual video and photos are going to be on the NAS, the backup part of it with the hard drives, not on my SSD. So if I lose my working file, uh, in regards to my project, it's not it's not the end of the world. I can remake those files, but I'll also be backing those up to the backup drive. However, I just want the more space in order for have more project space. So I'm going to set this up as a RAID 0. You can do it as a RAID 1 if you want, but I'm going to do it as a RAID 0. So we're going to hit next. Uh, here, I think we switch this to 5%. So pool guaranteed snapshot space. Uh, so here you see reserve space in the storage pool to maintain consistent pool access performance so that new data can be written into a complete block even when the pool is almost full. Uh, this can also extend the lifespan of your SSD in the pool. Uh, so this is essentially just making more information available uh, even when you're getting full. Uh, an alert threshold, we're going to set that up to 95%. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to create. And then it says, if you downgrade, it won't work. We're gonna let that go. This will take a few minutes, so just be patient. It actually tells you, this may take a few minutes. Please wait. Oh, that 
was a long time. That was probably 10 minutes. Now it's creating the pool. So it was analyzing before, now it's creating the pool. Ready. All right, let's have a look here. So the next thing we are going to do is now that we have our drive ready here, we're going to go into our control panel and we're going to set up a shared folder. So what we're going to do is create shared folder. We have our pool right here. We are going to name this one Scratch. This is our only thing we have set up right now. We're going to go thick provisioning. So here's the difference right here. Thin provisioning, pool space is allocated on demand as data is written to the folder. Thick provisioning, pool space is allocated when the shared folder is created, guaranteeing that space will always be available. So when I talked to Julian, he said this is a better option for your SSD and for editing off of, so choose thick provisioning. We are going to set this to max. Okay, and just give it a little less, he said. So we're going to do 0.75. So allocated folder quota. Uh, we're going to enable their snapshots. Okay, so 2.75 terabytes available. So next, yes. Here we want our video settings. So a ZIL synchronized mode right here. So uh, improve data integrity. Um, transactions are synchronous, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I don't know what any of this means, but Julian said to set this to none. So I know super helpful. You tech people can correct me on why these things, but Julian said to set it to none. Performance, we want our highest one right here, 128K, video editing, large file size, and backup. So make sure that is selected. We're gonna go next. We want all our access, yes. Next, yes, and finish. We'll go okay, okay. There it is working. Now it's applying a shared folder for us. There it is. Go back into our files and storage. So now here's what's happening. We have a warning on our threshold being reached. So uh, what it's saying is that because of our uh, pool allocation and how we've set it up, that it's saying uh, with everything being used, uh, it's thinking that we don't have any more space. Uh, so what we're gonna do is click on this main one here and we're gonna go manage. So everything is good. What we wanna do is take this action here and we're going to go to our set threshold and we're going to uncheck this because we don't want a threshold set on this. Apply, there you go, you can see it drops down and now we have our storage pool here. We have 2.7 terabytes for our scratch ready. The rest is for provisioning and for our um, you know, backup stuff that it does to keep things safe and working properly. So there we go. We have our scratch disk set up on our two M.2 SSDs. Now let's set up our hard drives, our NAS hard drives, our 12 terabytes for backup and storage. Okay, so what we're gonna do is gonna follow the same process, just a little different. So what you're gonna do now is still in here, we're gonna create new storage pool again. We're gonna go into the same menu. Now you're gonna see that our SSDs are gone but our HDDs are here, so we're gonna select them all. This one, we're gonna do a RAID 5, okay? So the difference between RAID 5 and RAID 6 is RAID 5 can have one hard drive go down, RAID 6 can have two hard drives go down and all your data be safe. Uh, I've only ever had just one hard drive go down, <laughs> knock on wood, never had two go down at the same time. Uh, so, and it's always telling you the health and status of your hard drives. So I am going to set it to a RAID 5, which gives me more space for storage. Uh, so we're gonna set that to RAID 5, hit next. Uh, this we're gonna leave all the same. We're gonna set our alert threshold to higher. We don't need it at 80, that's fine. We're gonna go next. So here we go, a new RAID group, and we're gonna go create. Same stuff as before about downgrading. Now we wait again. So you can see our storage pool two has now popped up. So this is where we're going to be putting all of our raw footage, all of the things we wanna back up, all our photos, all those kinds of things. So the way it's gonna work is, uh, imagine there's pools, right? So one pool is uh, a smaller pool where everything is moving in and out very quickly. Then you have a larger pool where things move in slowly, get out slowly, uh, but that pool is bigger and safer and able to keep more things in it. 
Uh, so that's where we're going to keep all of our media. So when we're editing off of things, we're going to have all the things that need to work fast, like our files for Final Cut or Lightroom, our catalogs, and our libraries are going to be on our scratch disk. And then our media is going to be on our HDDs. That's where uh, it's going to draw from and cache it and go in a circle. And it should work pretty fast. All right. That was another five to ten minutes. I'm not really, wasn't really keeping track. But we now have our storage pool 2 set up on our NAS. And this is going to be where we do our backup. This is a RAID 5 configuration. Uh, so same thing, we're going to go back into our control panel and we're going to do shared folders. We're going to go create, shared folder, and we're going to drop down to our pool 2. We're going to name, name this media. Thin provisioning, we're going to leave that. Set pool capacity, we're going to go all the way up. <clears throat> we're going to go next, yes. Uh, this one is the same thing. We're going to do the same as the other one, but we're going to leave this as standard now. Go next, 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 finish. Okay, okay. Now it's going to apply. Hopefully this will go quicker than last time. There we go. Now let's go back into our storage and quota. Here's our storage and snapshots. There's our storage pool. It is ready. We have all this wonderful space available to us here. Now if we go into our queue finder and we check out our network drive, we're going to log in. Okay. Boom. There are our drives. So now if we're looking on our drive here, here's our scratch. And so we should have all uh, three terabytes. On here we have 3.2 terabytes perfect and on this one our media we should have 40 terabytes ready so this is where our all our photos and videos and all the stuff we want to save and make sure is always safe that we never lose goes and in our scratch this is where our this is where our Lightroom catalog is gonna go this is where our um, this is where our library is going to go for Final Cut or Premiere or After Effects, whatever you use. So that is that. So I'm going to be running some tests on this later this week. I'm going to start uploading things to my NAS and hopefully everything works out the way that it is supposed to. So thank you once again to Julian over at QNAP who helped me figure this out for the first time. I hope this was helpful for you that are all trying to set up their NAS with a SSD slot on their NAS. I would highly recommend that if you are trying to edit off of your NAS and to back up your files. I think it's a really cool system because then you can just have one drive in order to do everything off of. With that being said, remember to always have a backup to your backup. I have my old Drobos over here, which are going back to my house where there'll be an off-site uh, NAS system. These ones are DAS, I guess, because they're de dedicated. They're not network attached, but they're going to be at my house. So everything is going to be double backed up. We'll have this to work off at my office, but if my office burns down or someone breaks in and steals all my stuff, God forbid, please don't do that. I don't know why I did this. Hashtag don't break in. Uh, but you have your NAS system here to back up all your files. So my system is, as soon as I get off a of shoot, it goes backed up right to here. And then I take that footage back home and back it up at home. I know it sounds crazy, but when you do this for professional work, the thing you never want to tell a client is that you lost their footage because reshoots are expensive because then it's on your dime. And a lot of times you can't do that reshoot because there's things that are unique to the system or the setup that you had and you won't be able to do those reshoots. And I can guarantee you those clients will not be happy. And I guarantee you probably those clients will not want to hire you back because if you can't just handle their footage, you probably can't handle the rest of the stuff that they need. Just a tip from someone who's been doing this for 15 years. Again, I've had lots of setups to try to back up my footage. This is the one I'm trying now as technology changes and different things are available. Uh, sometimes you need to change your system and I've been running Drobo for a long time, but QNAP seemed like a great solution in order for me to edit off of and to back up my files and footage. So. 
Thank you to QNAP for helping me set this all up and look forward to sharing how the uh, editing goes off of this in a later video. And once again, remember to subscribe and I'm gonna make some more videos. And if you don't subscribe, I'm gonna tell you. Um, so I didn't mean to say I'm gonna kill you, I just meant I'm not gonna make any more videos.